For more on this story, we're joined on the set by our international affairs commentator, Douglas Herbert. Doug, what did you make of his meeting with Vladimir Putin? Well, look, I mean, we just heard the man, right? Front row seat on, on his inner thinking. Um, are those the words of a man who is genuinely intent on uh, making peace, on seeking a compromise, on reaching out to his, the, his interlocutor on the other end of that very long table, Emmanuel Macron? Um, look, the French positive spin coming out of this meeting, we've heard it. It's that Emmanuel Macron said that Vladimir Putin had assured him about his willingness to talk about de-escalation, right, the big D word, de-escalation, uh, about even no further military initiatives, i.e. massing troops on the border with, your, uh, with, with Ukraine, your neighbor. Um, also, withdrawing all those Russian troops that are in, the, in Belarus, not just on the northern border of Ukraine, but in Belarus, about 30,000 of them, once those exercises with Belarus are finished in a couple of weeks, and promises to continue talking. So, you know, you come away and you listen to that official sort of statement from the French presidency. You say, not so bad. They, they got something done. They, these were not fruitless talks. But my sense in that is, once again, all roads lead back to Putin's worldview his mind. Obviously, no, I and no one, no one else out there can step inside Putin's mind. But the sense, having lived and worked and studied in Russia and, and for many years and, and knowing the country and following Putin's career very closely, this is a man, if anything, who uh, is very much embedded in his very blinkered worldview. That worldview, and we've spoken about it all, many, many times, is that genuinely Russia is besieged it is encircled by enemies, that the West does not have good intentions, that NATO is not a defensive alliance, that in fact NATO, the US, Europe are bent on humiliating Russia, bringing it down. This is a genuine grievance deeply embedded in almost the psychological DNA of Vladimir Putin. And it's one shared by many millions of Russians who watch the state TV and its propaganda. A lot of them have, like Vladimir Putin, they have the same world view. And a recent poll, it's very telling, by the Levada Center, a respected Russian pollster, shows that about 50% of Russians blame the US and Europe for the current crisis. 5%, five, blame Russia and Vladimir Putin. That gives you a sense of how much uh, a lot of his supporters, his base, are in sync with his thinking. So my sense of how this meeting went is, yeah, a lot of nice positive spin, hoping that the spin might actually will something to happen and maybe lead to something down the road that's promising. But my sense is Putin isn't giving an inch. He can't give an inch because it's not his mindset. It's not his worldview. It's not who he is. And that long table certainly sends out a very interesting <laughs> optic, doesn't Social it? Social distancing, yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so what is going to be on top of President Macron's agenda when he meets with his uh, Ukrainian counterpart? Uh, more reassurance, right? Uh, you know, on the one hand, uh, with Putin, right, his shuttle diplomacy mission there was to reassure Vladimir Putin that while the, West, while the U.S. is being all alarmist and everyone's talking about your invasion, I hear your legitimate security grievances. I hear you. I feel your grievances. I feel your pain, Vlad. That was essentially what he was doing with Putin. With Zelensky, he's trying to go there, and this is an even tougher lift, if you will, a heavier lift, to tell Zelensky, listen, I can do, you know, the en même temps thing that he always says at the same time. I can reassure Vladimir Putin that everything will be fine with his security grievances and at the same time defend your sovereignty and your territorial integrity here in Ukraine. Now, you might say that that is going to raise a lot of eyebrows in Ukraine. They're saying, how do you do both at the same time? How do you make concessions to Putin? And let's be honest, the fear in Ukraine is that Macron, with all the good intentions and the best of intentions, will end up cutting a deal with Vladimir Putin making Macron look like the great global peacemaker, a cutting the deal at the expense of Ukraine. Goes to the heart of a big thing we don't have time to talk about today, but the Minsk Accords, you'll remember them. There were two stages signed in 2015. They called for a ceasefire in eastern Ukraine, the rebel-held east, and they called for heavy arms and troops to be withdrawn. Well, here we are eight weeks, uh, seven, eight years later, none of that has happened. It's a simmering conflict that goes on and on. The Minsk, uh, Minsk Accords have never been implemented. Macron will be trying to do that when he sits down with Zelensky. They'll be talking about the framework for getting the Normandy group of France, Russia, and Germany and Ukraine back at that table to talk about that agreement. But once again, go back to that original uh, quote we heard from uh, Vladimir Putin. I'm not too uh, sanguine. I'm not too optimistic that those Minsk Accords are ever going to really get off the ground. Doc Herbert, thank you so much.